Marman, maybe I'll ask you to, to pick up on that, that series of thoughts. So there are two monoclonal antibodies that are currently in phase three studies in early Alzheimer's disease. Uh, they're BAN2401 and gantanerumab. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about how these molecules are being used to approach mild Alzheimer's disease? What's been seen? What do you expect to come out of this? Yeah, so uh, it's a very broad topic. We could spend a whole hour just talking about that. Uh, BAN241 and gantanerumab are the latest in many uh, monoclonals, solanezumab, crinazumab, bapinuzumab, uh, et cetera. Uh, we know that each of these different molecule, uh, monoclonals target different forms of amyloid. And the questions that our people are asking nowadays is, does it make sense to clear amyloid altogether at all? That's what the monoclonals do. Or is it a specific form of species that you should be targeting? And the reason it's important is that these two left are targeting specific forms. BAN241 is uh, targeting the protofibular form. Uh, Gantanerumab is sort of, uh, targeting a little bit on the oligomeric form, which is a pre-protofibular state. So we will know if it does. The one thing that's very exciting about BAN241 that's relevant to this audience is they their phase two program was very big. I'm talking about 840 people in a clinical trial, which is usually a phase three trial, not a phase two trial. And it was, uh, and that's, so that's, I think it was a very informative study. Second is that they found what the dose was that was appropriate. Third, they showed only for the second time the what I call directional concordance, whereas that when you removed amyloid, you saw some proportionate clinical stabilization of cognitive decline. That was big because the only one other drug, aducanumab, has even shown that in earlier studies. So directional concordance has been very informative that we can remove amyloid and there is some signal of cognitive decline. So BAN-2401 is showing a lot of excitement. It has just entered its phase three clinical trials. We expect to see a readout in a few more years. Uh, but the, the, the target makes sense. The dose find that led to the trial design made sense. Um, the clinical efficacy signal makes sense. So I have to tell you that if you're ready to throw away a, a monoclonal antibodies, this one still has a strong argument to stay in the game. Uh, gantanerumab has clear evidence at their higher dose that they can remove amyloid very robustly. They have now gone back into their phase three program. We expect a clinical read in the next few years as well. Uh, it does have an, a, a, an attraction because it's a subcutaneous dosing. Uh, but the bottom line is, is that these are the two monoclonals that are left, still showing uh, some promise. So these are aimed at species of amyloid beta. One of the things that I've heard a few people say here at the AAIC is, yes. it's time to give up amyloid beta. Yes, they Anybody have. here feel like uh, we have exhausted all of the targets of amyloid beta? Or are these two programs and others that uh, target forms of, of, uh, the, of the amyloid cascade, are they still worthy of proceed, proceeding? Absolutely. Ali? I mean, I, I think, again, we've learned a lot about what not to do and what doesn't work at what stage. Um, but, you know, all the drugs have been, as Marwan said, have been uh, tested before, are a specific population for a specific time, for a specific dose with a specific mechanism, and they're not all the same. And um, I think, you know, at later stages, we're learning that the amount of vari uh, variance that you can sort of association between sort of uh, these pathologies and dementia that we can change are probably lower. So as we go earlier uh, and with different doses, uh, can you still actually have meaningful changes? And I think that ending is still yet to be uh, written. I don't think we're there yet. Um, that and there are some other, other drugs that still affect amyloid. And then ultimately the question is, even if you then combine it with other, other types of mechanisms, would you have um, not just a monotherapy effect, but you know, a, a combination therapy effect. I think we have to do those studies. We have to be thoughtful about how we do it, measure it with biomarkers, and probably uh, in those cases do a lot more uh, earlier phase two testing. So let me pursue that a little bit uh, with you. One of the other amyloid related drugs that's uh, currently being tested is a base inhibitor. Mm -hmm. Could mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about base inhibitors and why they might be useful sure. in Alzheimer's disease? Uh, sure, yeah. The uh, base inhibitor inhibitors uh, are doing a little bit of a different strategy than the, 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 the MABs. So they're working on the end of decreasing production. And um, so there have been uh, several base inhibitors been tested. Um, what we don't know really is 
um, how much to remove uh, at a what stage. And um, uh, you know, recently, the development of a couple of these base inhibitors have been actually, a few of them have been stopped. And uh, in those cases, the levels of um, suppression or decreased production uh, was very, very high. So it, it lowered amyloid levels uh, significantly. And the question is whether it was actually too much. There's some evidence that suggests that there's, a, there's actually a sweet spot and we, we, you know, uh, the field may have over, overshot it. The other issue is whether there's off-target uh, effects for these other drugs, um, including uh, in, you know, base two uh, or other things. So um, you know, there is uh, you know, one, one drug right, right now that is in white testing and, and uh, 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 and that's uh, Elena Basistat. Um, and um, we'll again uh, have, have a readout of, of that hopefully in the next uh, year or two, I think.